The Pareto Principle goes something like this. 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. In other words, 20% lang ng total effort mo produces 80% of your total results. Yung Pareto Principle is also known as the 80-20 rule, pero minsan pwede siyang 70-30, 90-10, pero babalikan natin yan maya-maya. So hindi ka nagkamali sa pag-click, we will be talking about the Figaro Group IPO and the Pareto Principle will make a lot more sense later in our discussion. Pero kung nagsispeed run ka ng reviews, then nandito yung timestamp and click mo na lang siya somewhere around here. So wala pang ticker symbol na in-assign or na-approve para sa IPO or stock na ito kasi sa sobrang excited ko about a coffee company, uh, binasa ko agad yung initial prospectus and for sure marami pang details na magbabago. So ako personally gusto ko yung idea na it should use the ticker symbol kape as in KAPE for obvious reasons pero if hindi naman yan yung maging final na ticker symbol just check the comment section kasi i-update ko yan pero guys speaking of obvious reasons you will be surprised to know that this IPO isn't actually focused on the coffee shops but instead the Figaro Group's IPO is focused on its much stronger brand which is Angel's Pizza pero more on that later Figaro Coffee Group Incorporated is 11.63% owned by Carmatheus Holdings Incorporated and 88. Actually wala naman siguro kayong pakialam dito no and ayoko nang sayangin yung oras nyo so ipapakita na lang natin yung corporate structure. Oh ayan. Let's move on. Okay guys, so the Figaro Group is a set of retail restaurants with 90 branches, nationwide and international territories. Divided siya into 5 food chains with different concepts and very different raw materials, ingredients, and different products. Figaro Coffee, 52 branches. Angel's Pizza, 31 branches. Tienmas Taiwanese Cuisine at 5 branches. One Figaro Group Express or TFG Express. And one Cafe Portofino. Target offer period December 16 to December 22, 2021. Tentative pa lang to. And another tentative date is the listing date which is currently at December 31, 2021. Pero mataas yung chance na mabago pa ito kasi I don't think uh, maganda para dun sa IPO na maglist on New Year's Eve kasi parang wala namang trader na gusto mong bukas ng computer ng laptop and then mag-trade on, on you know the last day of the year kaya I think magbabago pa ito yung total offered shares ay 1.386 common shares consisting of 1.26 billion primary shares and 126 million secondary shares the maximum offer price is currently pegged at 1.28 pesos per share and kagaya nung kanina mataas yung chance na magbabago pa yan madidiscount pa yan parang yung medilang IPO last week which was uh, pegged at 2.45 nagkaroon siya ng 8.2% discount kaya naging 2.30 pesos na lang per share so with this information this IPO will be worth 1.77 billion pesos okay let's talk about numbers here's a table of the historical revenue per store per brand from 2018 until June 30 2021 kasama dito yung Figaro coffee shop chain whose revenue has been declining since 2018 si Angel's Pizza naman pataas ng pataas ang kita niya year after year after year in fact it achieved its highest sales during the pandemic years for Tienma naman, the revenue also declined. I think this can be attributed to its identity kasi it's more of a sit-down restaurant compared to Angel's Pizza na mas catered towards takeout and delivery. Finally, Cafe Portofino's revenue increased from 2020 to 2021 pero the value is incomparable to the revenue by the first three brands. Ngayon, let's focus on the last column. Figaro's 2021 revenue was 76.8 million, Angel's at 1.2 billion, Tienmas at 42.4 million pesos, Cafe Portofino at 1.2 million pesos. Given that the total revenue is 1.28 billion pesos, ang percentage ng revenue nila ay 5.9%, 90%, 3.3%, and less than 1% respectively. Okay, here's the table naman that corresponds to the actual number of stores during the three and a half years of revenue and let's jump right into the last column. Figaro Coffee has 52 branches, Angels has 31, Tienmas 5, and Cafe Portofino 1 branch. In terms of percentages, 
Figaro 58.4%, Angels 34.8%, Tienmas 5.61%, Cafe Portofino 1.1%. So naalala nyo ba yung Pareto Principle at the start? It will all make sense now. Pag kinumbine natin yung information from the first and second tables, we will notice that 90% of the revenue was generated by 35% of the total stores, specifically Angel's Pizza. Siyempre, hindi siya perfect example ng 80-20 principle or 90-10, 70-30. Pero isipin mo, out of 90 branches across the different brands, 5 different brands, 31 branches ng Angel's Pizza yung nag-generate ng 1.2 billion pesos just on the first 6 months of 2021. Okay, so baka matanong nyo, pero wala talaga sa prospectus yung Pareto Principle. Narealize ko lang siya when I was reading the prospectus doing my research and uh, when I was trying to find an answer kung bakit ba naka-focus yung attention nila sa pag-accelerate ng growth ng Angel's Pizza instead of focusing their attention on the Figaro Coffee Shops. Which segues nicely into our next discussion, the use of proceeds. Okay, so first things first, the capital that will be raised from this IPO is approximately 1.6 billion pesos assuming no over allotment is exercised. So in case naman na merong over allotment, just refer to this table pero I will be using the 1.5 billion pesos as the net proceeds para mas simple. For the rest of the discussion, yun na lang yung gamitin natin. Bale, merong five ways na inilatag dun sa prospectus about the use of proceeds. First one is store openings and renovations, 33%. So, ito na yung summary ng mga number of stores that they plan to build in the next 2 to 3 years. Angel's Pizza, 35 stores. Figaro Coffee, 6. Tienmas, 2. TFG Express, 18 stores and the total is 61 new stores until 2024. With respect to the total net proceeds, ito yung percentages ng estimated costs to build these branches and we can see that the focus is on accelerating the growth of Angel's Pizza at 22.77%. And that's how you apply Pareto Principle in business. Second use ay commissary expansions. So correct me if I'm wrong guys kasi wala ko masyadong alam sa food logistics and delivery pero I think yung commissary is parang a warehouse or a central hub uh, factory where they uh, assemble the ingredients and prepare the products that they will then deliver to the franchises. Similar to a gardenia loaf bread na consistent yung lasa kahit saan ka bumili kasi nga isa lang yung lugar kung saan nila pinaprepare yung mga loaf na yun, yung mga products nila. Yung maganda sa mga commissary is they can maintain consistency across different um, franchises and branches kaysa naman ibigay lang nila yung dry ingredients and uh, recipes tapos kanya-kanya na ng pagluluto or pagpiprepare. According to the disclosure, one commissary that they plan to build will be called Mayon 2 Commissary and magkakaroon daw ng micro laboratory for product development. Approximately 225 million pesos will be used to build this Mayon 2 Commissary. Yung third use of proceeds ay for debt repayment at 5% and I cannot emphasize how happy I was when I first read about this. Since nagsimula yung pag-review natin ng mga IPOs in this channel, uh, ito yata yung first time na hindi super focused yung IPO sa pagbabayad ng utang. At least hindi majority ng use of proceeds niya ay mapupunta sa pagbabayad ng utang. Self-explanatory naman yung pagbabayad utang. So, ipapakita ko na lang yung mga banks where they have financial obligations. Yung fourth use of proceeds ay for IT infrastructure. 5 million pesos will be used for this or approximately 0%. Yes, 0%. In my opinion, this is neither good nor bad kasi para sa akin, central naman talaga for any business yung paggamit or pag-leverage ng technology to make sure that it's as efficient as it can be. Yung final use of proceeds will be used for potential acquisitions. 600 million pesos will be used for this or 39% of the net proceeds. It will be used to acquire other food service businesses pero hindi nila pinangalanan doon sa prospectus. Nasa early stages pa lang naman sila ng pag-aaral and pag-evaluate ng mga food service businesses na to. Maraming factors that are being actively considered such as economic outlook or how soon the public will be comfortable or how soon they will embrace the new normal. So kung magkaroon daw ng changes, they will reallocate the 39% or 600 million pesos to the first four uses that we discussed. So kung mangyari ngayon, kung magkaroon ng major-major changes, I will create a follow-up video para mapag-usapan natin. Ang tanong ngayon, mag invest ba tayo? And without going too much into technical analysis, let me share how I would answer that question. Kung meron interesting na IPO, dapat ma-meet niya muna yung two criteria ko before before I do my further research. So first is dapat maintindihan ko muna yung business. Yung general understanding lang, hindi naman kailangan super detailed. Questions like, 
what's the nature of the business, what's the problem that is trying to solve, ano yung risks that hinder the growth of this business, sino yung mga competition niya, yung mga question na ganyan. Super general lang. And second, ginagamit ko ba yung product or ginagamit ko ba yung service? Kasi for example, Jollibee, uh, naintindihan ko nga yung first question na I understand the nature of the business, it serves chicken joy, spaghetti, Filipino comfort food in general. Kilala ko yung mga competition niya sa bansa natin. Pero kung hindi naman ako kumakain ng chicken joy and spaghetti, mahirapan akong i-convince and maging uh, believer ng IPO na to kung IPO pa lang yung Jollibee ah. Kasi ako mismo, hindi ko kinakain yung food nila, yung food offerings. So parang ganun lang din sa Figaro IPO na to. Kung customer ka ng Figaro Coffee Shops and Angel's Pizza, especially yung creamy spinach dip, hmm, sarap nun. E di magandang starting point na yun. After that, I can proceed with my further research. Pero kung hindi naman, yung choice mo ngayon is to try out their products first or skip ka na lang muna sa IPO na to. Kasi after all, hindi naman sila yung top one brands when it comes to coffee shops and quick service pizza. Those spots belong to Starbucks and Pizza Hut respectively. I'll see you on the next one. Bye!